Hello everyone and welcome to the new hits where I cover brand new top 40 entries judging their quality and how much longevity I think they'll have. This week, as Christmas descends slowly to be fully gone next week, free songs venture in in place of those that left, plus a new song with a good amount of propulsion behind it. Let's get to that first. In catching up with a bunch of albums I missed over the course of 2020, I haven't had the time for new music, so when this dropped on Christmas Day, I didn't get the chance to hear it immediately. So before having done so, it's the end of the year, I hop on to rate your music because I'm curious about how the 2020 charts look at the end of the year, and what do I see as the number one single of the year? Good days. My curiosity fully peaked by that level of quality coming from a Hot 100 charting song. I gave this a listen and this is the real deal. There's a lot of stuff to love about this number, from SZA's gorgeous performance, the vocal layering in the hook, the lyrical content, in which SZA shuns past and present grievances, and X being used as an example in favor of the good days the future might hold. What really puts this over the top for me, though, is the guitar line, which hammers in the melancholic yet hopeful lyrics and is produced for a pitch-perfect psychedelic sound that makes it feel like you're floating along as it plays. The song runs nearly for a hefty five minutes, and yet not a moment feels wasted. One of the only recent singles to really capture me in its atmosphere and get me emotional. Hallmarks of many of my personal favorites, and I can say with confidence that this will be joining them. I'm giving this a 10 out of 10. Exceptional plus. It seems I'm not the only person who adores this too, since it's gained a bunch of streaming since its release. This looks like it'll have a decent run, possibly all the way to the top 10 if the video and or album are timed right, but how long said run might be is up for the debate. Next up, country. I should probably go to bed. Dan and Shay have been pretty unimpressive as of late. Sat firmly in the boyfriend country mold, this duo I'm impressed with their pop breakthrough in tequila, but since then they've slumped into mediocrity. This, a ballad where Shay sings about trying to avoid an ex he's sure he'll catch feelings for again if he runs into, I think manages to lift them out of that slump to an extent, but its good moments are much different than tequila's. Sure, Shay's over singing, including those infamous eyes from Speechless, is present here, but those eyes become a little more tolerable in the downwards modulation he employs in this song. What really makes this song for me is the final chorus, a surprising explosion of euphoric pop country production that makes the first two minutes or so worth sitting through. I can compare this to Santa Tell Me, which I covered a few weeks back, but the payoff is even better. This isn't Dan and Shay at their best, but it is certainly not them their worst, and hopefully the upwards trajectory can continue. For now, this gets a 7 out of 10. Good. This came back from recurrency, presumably meaning it was knocked off only by Christmas, despite hitting 20 weeks. Regardless, country radio pickups need to continue, or else the song is in dire straits with its ability to go recurrent again. Now, a superstar's return. We will love drunk waiting on Ed Sheeran has returned after a year's absence with a Lucy. He's explicitly stated no album is coming yet, so it makes sense for this to be no pop endeavor. Afterglow feels like a return to roots type of song, employing his early strength in acoustic ballads, but with more processing to it. That's probably the biggest weakness of this song, the vocal production, as while it can amplify the winter feeling the song does have, I feel like it would have been preferable to just have his natural voice for a more intimate song like this. Not to say the song isn't enjoyable at all. As I said before, it has a cold wintry feel to it, Ed himself acting as the warmth. That's perfect for a love ballad like this, where he tries to hold on to the afterglow or live in the moment with his partner, filled with the Edisms that we've become accustomed to, such as the radio playing Iron and Wine. Compared to his poppier cuts, at least, a song like this is where those little details fit best. It captures a moment, which is pretty much the deal with the song as a whole. While this isn't the type of thing I'd return to often, it's pleasant, and if it becomes a radio staple, I won't be complaining. Giving it a 6 out of 10. Decent. I don't think this will be a smash like Ed's massive album promoters, but I can see it lingering for a good bit. And in contrast to that, a complete newcomer to the charts. While I haven't listened to any of CJ's other music to judge as much, the New York drill sound used here apparently is putting him out of his element. He's usually a more melodic rapper. If that's the case, he seems to have adapted. He sounds comfortable here, running through the classic tropes with energy and some quality lines. 
It's nice to see another drill hit since the late Pop Smoke's Dior is the only one of note, but that brings us to probably Whoopi's greatest failing and one that might have an effect on Drill's perception. It uses the same sample as Dior does, giving it a noticeably similar beat. That doesn't end up having much bearing on the song's quality though, since Dior's beat was already fantastic, it stands to reason Whoopi's won't be too many steps down, and it isn't. One up it has on Dior is length. Dior has an unnecessarily long instrumental section at its conclusion, but Whoopi sticks to a succinct two minutes. Overall, I might be feeling a bit kind, but the fun to be had here makes up for its derivative nature. I'll give it a 6 out of 10 decent. I think this is going to have a similar chart run to Mobamba from a couple years back. It'll make a top 10 push with streaming dominance, but it's a no-hoper for number one. So, that's our week. No real negatives to speak of, and only two weeks into the year, our first 10 of 2021 for a very deserving song. Next week, only big release is a new single from Justin Bieber, but with Christmas out for good, other materials hovering below could squeeze their way in. We'll have to see. Until next time, see you on the next episode of the new hits.